Hey there, amazing people. I'm thrilled to have you here today. Hello and a warm welcome to our channel. Today, we're delving into Pan-Slavic language. A Pan-Slavic language is a zonal auxiliary language for communication among the Slavic peoples. There are approximately 400 million speakers of the Slavic languages. In order to communicate with each other, speakers of different Slavic languages often resort to international lingua francas, primarily English or Russian in East Slavic zonal cases. But since Slavic languages are closely related lexically and grammatically and are comparatively easier to learn when another Slavic language is already known, there have been numerous attempts to construct a more neutral auxiliary language that could act as a common language for Slavophones. The earliest Pan-Slavic linguistic efforts preceded academic knowledge and reconstruction of Proto-Slavic, which was likely spoken between 2nd century BCE and 6th century CE, from which all Slavic languages developed in following centuries. Let's now turn our attention to history and uncover the fascinating insights it brings to the table. The history of zonal Slavic languages is closely connected with Pan-Slavism, an ideology that endeavors cultural and political unification of all Slavs, based on the conception that all Slavic people are part of a single Slavic nation. Along with this belief came also the need for an umbrella Slavic language. The strongest candidate for that position among modern languages is Russian, the language of the largest and during most of the 19th century, the only Slavic state and mother tongue of more than half of Slavs. This option enjoys most of its popularity in Russia itself, but has also been favored by Pan-Slavists abroad, for example the Slovak Yudov Deter. Others have proposed that Old Church Slavonic would be a better and more neutral solution. In previous centuries, Old Church Slavonic had served as an administrative language across a large part of the Slavic world, and it is still used on a large scale in Eastern Orthodox liturgy, where it plays a role similar to Latin in the West. Old Church Slavonic has the additional advantage of being similar to the common ancestor of the Slavic languages, Proto-Slavic. However, it has several practical disadvantages as well, its grammar is complex and its vocabulary is characterized by many words that have been lost from the modern languages, as well as an absence of words for modern concepts. Hence, early Pan-Slavic language projects aimed at modernizing Old Church Slavonic and adapting it to the needs of everyday communication. The spotlight now falls on early projects as we delve deeper into its details. The first Pan-Slavic grammar, Grammatino Itzgen Jopuskum Jezka by the Croatian priest Jura Kryani, was written in 1665. He referred to the language as Ruski Jezik Russian language, but in reality it was mostly based on a mixture of the Russian edition of Church Slavonic and his own southern Chekhovian dialect of Croatian. Kryani used it not only for this grammar, but also in other works, including the treatise Politica. According to an analysis of the Dutch Slavist Tom Ekman, 59% of the words used in Politica are of common Slavic descent, 10% come from Russian and Church Slavonic, 9% from Croatian and 2.5% from Polish. Kryony was not the first who attempted writing in a language understandable to all Slavs. In 1583 another Croatian priest, I'm Budini, had translated the Summa Doctrina Christina by Petrus Canisius into Slovinsky, in which he used both the Latin and Cyrillic alphabets. After Kryony, numerous other efforts have been made to create an umbrella language for the speakers of Slavic languages. A notable example is Anniversalis Lingua Slavica by the Slovak attorney Jen Herk, published in Latin in 1826. Unlike Kryony project, this project was closer to the West Slavic languages. During the second half of the 19th century Pan-Slavic language projects were mostly the domain of Slovenes and Croats. In this era of awakening national consciousness, the Russians were the only Slavs who had their own state, other Slavic peoples inhabited large, mostly non-Slavic states, and clear borders between the various nations were mostly lacking. Among the numerous efforts at creating written standards for the South Slavic languages there were also efforts at establishing a common South Slavic language. 
Illyrian that might also serve as a literary language for all Slavs in the future. Of special importance is the work of Matija a Slovenian Ostroslavist who later converted to Pan-Slavism. In 1865 he published Usajemi Pravopist Slavjanski Mutual Slavic Orthography. In this work, he postulated that the best way for Slavs to communicate with other Slavs was by taking their own language as a starting point and then modifying it in steps. First, he proposed changing the orthography of each individual language into a generic mutual pan-Slavic orthography. Subsequently, he described a grammar that was based on comparing five major Slavic languages of his days, Old Church Slavonic, Russian, Polish, Czech and Serbian. Apart from a book about the language itself, Majo also used it for a biography of Cyril and Methodius and for a magazine he published in the years, Slavjan. A fragment in the language can still be seen on the altar of Majo's church in Gertschak. Other pan-Slavic language projects were published in the same period by the Croatian Matijaban, the Slovenes and, as well as the Macedonian-Bulgarian Greater Palic of all based on the idea of combining Old Church Slavonic with elements from the modern South Slavic languages. File Matijaban Matijaban File Zig Greater Slav Greater Slav Razlig File Boda Rage Boda Ray File Matijamaja Op Matijamaja Zilowski File Greater Palic of Greater Palic of all authors mentioned above were motivated by the belief that all Slavic languages were dialects of one single Slavic language rather than separate languages. They deplored the fact that these dialects had diverged beyond mutual comprehensibility, and the pan-Slavic language they envisioned was intended to reverse this process. The long-term objective was that this language would replace the individual Slavic languages. Major, for example compared the pan-Slavic language with standardized languages like ancient Greek and several modern languages. Consequently, these authors did not consider their projects constructed languages at all. In most cases they provided grammatical comparisons between the Slavic languages, sometimes but not always offering solutions they labeled as pan-Slavic. What their projects have in common that they neither have a rigidly prescriptive grammar nor a separate vocabulary. Now, we shift our focus to the 20th century, a topic that deserves our attention. In the early 20th century, it had become clear that the divergence of the Slavic languages was irreversible and the concept of a pan-Slavic literary language was no longer realistic. The pan-Slavic dream had lost most of its power, and pan-Slavists had to satisfy themselves with the formation of two multinational Slavic states, Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. However, the need for a common language of communication for Slavs was still felt, and due to the influence of constructed languages like Esperanto, efforts were made to create a language that was no longer supposed to replace the individual Slavic languages, but to serve as an additional second language for pan-Slavic communication. In the same period, the nexus of pan-Slavic activity shifted to the north, especially to the Czech lands. In 1907, the Czech dialectologist Einik Hoek published a grammar of New Slavish, a proposal for a common literary language for all Slavs within the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Five years later, another Czech, Joseph Kohn, published Slavina, a Slavic Esperanto, which however had very little in common with Esperanto, but instead was mostly based on Czech. Whereas these two projects were naturalistic, the same cannot be said about two other projects by Czech authors, Slovantina by Edmund Korkup and Slavsky Jezik by Bohumil Hall. Both projects, published in 1912 and 1920 respectively, show a clear tendency towards simplification, for example by eliminating grammatical gender and cases, and schematicism. During the as the Czech poet and former Esperantist, also known under his pseudonym J. Karen, worked for several years with the team of prominent interlinguists on an elaborate project, Medoslavjanski Jezik into Slavic language. Among other things, they wrote a grammar, an Esperanto into Slavic word list, a dictionary, a course and a textbook. Although none of those were ever published, the project gained some attention of linguists from various countries. Probably due to the political reality of those days, this language was primarily based on Russian. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at the digital age.
Although pan-Slavism has not played a role of any significance since the collapse of the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, globalization and new media like the Internet have led to a renewed interest in a language that would be understandable for all Slavs like. After the fall of the USSR, the role of the Russian language as a lingua franca in Eastern Europe and the Balkans diminished, also because many inhabitants of other countries in the region perceived it as the language of their former oppressor. Older projects were largely forgotten, but as it became relatively easy for authors to publish their work, several new projects emerged, mostly in Slavic Omega circles. Thus, during the first years of the 21st century projects appeared under names like Slovo, Glagolica, Proslova and Ruslavsk. Most of them were incomplete and abandoned by their authors after a while. The only project that acquired some fame in the same period was Slovia of the Slovak Mark Hoko. Unlike most previous projects it was not a naturalistic but a schematic language, its grammar being based almost entirely on Esperanto. In addition, it was a fully functional language, and it became the first pan-Slavic language with a small user community. Slovia was not only intended to serve as an auxiliary language for Slavs, but also for use on a global scale like Esperanto. For that reason it gained little acceptance among Slavs, a high degree of simplification, characteristic for most international auxiliary languages, makes it easier to learn for non-Slavs, but widens the distance with the natural Slavic languages and gives the language an overly artificial character, which by many is considered a disadvantage. Hoko maintained a proprietary hold on Slovio, and since 2011 the language is no longer being developed and is effectively defunct. Partly in response to the problems of Slovio, a more naturalistic and community-based project was started in 2006 under the name Sloviansky by a group of people from different countries. Initially, it was being developed in three grammar versions, a naturalistic version by Jan van Steenbergen, a more simplified, pigeon-like version by Andrinik and a schematic version by Gabriel Svoboda, but in 2009 it was decided that only the naturalistic version would be continued under the name Sloviansky. Sloviansky was mostly used in internet traffic and in a newsletter, Sloviansk Gazeta. In 2012, its user community numbered several hundreds of people. An effort to bring Sloviansky and Slovio together resulted in Slovioski in 2009. Its original purpose was to provide Slovio with a more naturalistic grammar, but gradually it developed into a separate language project. Like Sloviansky, it was a collaborative project that existed in two variants, a full and a simplified version. Another project that saw the light in the same period was Novozovansky Neoslavonic by the Czech Vojc Mrumka, based on Old Church Slavonic grammar but using part of Slovensky's vocabulary. In 2011, Slovensky, Slovyoski and Novozovansky were merged under the name Interslavic Midoslovjansky. In 2017 and 2018 Interslavic conferences took place in the Czech Republic and in 2019 the language was featured in Flav Morrell's movie The Painted Bird. By July 2021, its user community on Facebook had grown to over 15,000 people. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of I'm Budini as we examine its impact and relevance. As early as 1583, the Venetian-Croatian priest writer I'm Budini from Zadar translated Petrus Kanishus Summa Doctrina Christinet into a language he called Slovinsky or Slawinsky Iozic Slavic language, using both the Latin and the Cyrillic alphabets. Budini did not actually give a description of this language, but according to some authors it was a mixture of Serbo-Croatian, Church Slavonic, Czech, and Polish. However, Nikolina Trunt argues that Church Slavonic, Polish or Czech were not used in the work at all, and that the language Budini used was merely Shokovian Ijekovian with a number of hyper Ijekovisms and Czechovisms. Sample Kois Vlaskoga, Ili Latinskoga Iozika, Vislawinski Iozik Protumeo ist Popsim Vdino Zadranin. Translated from the Italian or Latin language into the Slavic language by Father Iman Budini from Zadar. In this section, we'll be peeling back the layers of Jura Kryony to reveal its true essence. 
in Siberia in 1666, the Croat Jura Kryni wrote Gramatino Itztenjubuskum Jizvu Grammatical Overview of the Russian Language. In this work he described in fact not the Russian language but a common Slavonic language based on different Slavic languages, mostly on Russian and Chekhovian Croatian. The author used it not only for this grammar, but also in other works, including the treatise Politica. According to an analysis of the Dutch Slavist Tom Etman, 59% of the words used in Politica are of common Slavic descent, 10% come from Russian and Church Slavonic, 9% from Croatian and 2.5% from Polish. Sample Romanized, original in Cyrillic. Ilzika Sawashi Nostist Somo Potromo Oridi K. Mudrusti, I. I. Wane Stanoto is name. Shimki Naro Dimot is Robi Ilzik, Tim Pribovni I. Witwoni Raz Brawlite Remestva I. Usated you Mateli I. Promisli. Obi Besigi I. Legota I. Zerum Nogo Pomaget Nom Mudrik Sauta I. Zbriteni I. No Uzekik Mernik I. Ratnik Del Lesnia Washini. Let's now venture into the realm of Jin Herk and explore the fascinating intricacies it holds. Another early example of a zonal language for Slavs was Anovasilis lingua Slavica Universal Slavic Language or All Slavic Language. It was created and published by the Slovak attorney Jin Herk in his work Elementa Anovasilis lingua Slavica in 1826. Unlike languages like Esperanto, it had no well-defined grammar and no vocabulary of its own. Like many other pan-Slavists in the 19th century, Herk considered the Slavic languages dialects of a single Slavic language, and his book is mostly a comparative grammar of these dialects, in which he sometimes offered grammatical solutions explicitly characterized by him as universal Slavic. Although Herk found Cyrillic more suitable for the Slavic languages, he nevertheless chose the Latin alphabet for his project, with the addition of a few Cyrillic letters, and for and remarkably, for he preferred although he explicitly did not exclude Cyrillic either, as well as Ekstash. Near the end of his book, Huck gave a few examples of his stylus universalis, applied to the Pannonian Slovak dialect. Zastari go viku by legidna krajika, koja mola tri prelepij didis, milik, krasika mudrik, tri bile bogate, akrum bogats for milika by lapokana, krasika ativa, a mudrika yumina. In olden times there was a queen who had three very beautiful girls, kindness, beauty, and wisdom. All three were rich. In addition to being rich, kindness was humble, beauty was polite, and wisdom was wise. Now, let's delve into the intricacies of Slavina and explore its various aspects. Slavina was created by Joseph Cohn in 1912 in Prague and published in the same year in a booklet titled Lovnika Slovenska Sprant Slavina. According to the author, its main purpose was to serve as a communication tool in trade and industry. The subtitle of the language, a Slavic Esperanto or its Esperanto translation Slova Esperanto, is sometimes erroneously cited as the name of the language, but in reality the language had very little in common with Esperanto. Instead, it was a clear example of a naturalistic language, with three grammatical genders, seven noun cases and five verbal tenses. Although Cohn claimed his language was based on all Slavic languages, it bore a striking similarity to his native Czech, both orthographically, phonologically, lexically and morphologically. Particularly unusual for a pan-Slavic language project was the distinction between long and short consonants. The first sentence from the song Hey, Slavs. Sloven, ne lipo slovenum, dot ne vern sris prone rudum. Hey, Slavs, we will have our beautiful Slavic language, as long as we give our faithful heart for our people. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding Slovenina and gain a fresh perspective. Slovenina Czech for Slavic language is the oldest example of a schematic language for pan Slavic use. It was published in 1912 by the Czech linguist and Esperantist Edmund Kokop in his booklet Pokus o Dorozum Vak Jazik Slovensk. Kokop had no political, pan Slavic ambitions but felt frustrated by the fact that Slavs had to resort to German for their communication and believed that they would be helped with the simple, artificially created Slavic language, for which he took Esperanto as an example. 
The language had no grammatical gender and no cases. All nouns and adjectives ended in a consonant. Plurals were formed with a for nouns and I for adjectives, and verbs were conjugated only for tense. Slovak web roots were derived regularly from church Slavonic, and international vocabulary was used when a Slovak word was hard to find. The language was written in the Latin alphabet with a few unusual additions, for, 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 y for j, j for, for, and for. The Gospel of Matthew Vitamji de Prido yen cresta, keze in opu visim ujisk, i rekea, pokea ni havai e, bo priblayu sokasvai ni besk. In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As we venture forward, let's examine Nipasliva in detail and gain a deeper appreciation for its significance. Nipasliva was an unpublished project, created by the Russian writer, publicist and music critic Tsevolod Yevrafovich Cheshkin in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia. It was based on a system created by him in 1913 to construct zonal languages based on Esperanto affixes which are used with national roots and called it Nipo. According to that principle, he created Niposlava Slovak Nipo, a Nipo language based on Russian, Polish, Czech and Serbian lexicon, in 1915 or 1916. It is unknown how elaborated this language project really was. He also used this system to construct other new Esperantos based on Latin Romance and Germanic languages. A fragment from the Lord's Prayer. Vateronia, Koterija Estus in Longjebov. Ilegia estunomo via. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In this segment, we'll be unraveling the complexities of Medaslavjansky Jezik and exploring its multifaceted nature. Medaslavjansky Jezik into Slavic language was an elaborate project worked on during the years in Czechoslovakia by a group of interlinguists, led by the poet Ladislav Povmal aka Ejikeren and the pedagogue Yaroslav Podobsk, both of whom were prominent members of the Occidental movement. Their idea was that for zonal languages an inter-Germanic, an inter-Romance, an inter-Slovic and an inter-Indic language together would enable two-thirds of the world's population to communicate with each other. The language they created used grammatical and lexical features of various Slovic languages, primarily Russian and Czech, and may be viewed as a naturalistic planned language. They wrote a grammar crack grammatica medoslavjansky go jezika, an Esperanto into Slavic word list, a dictionary, a course a textbook and a few longer texts, practically none of which were ever published. Nevertheless, the project gained some attention of linguists from various countries. An excerpt from the manuscript Revolusija v Istrigi Interlingvistiki. Dutigo Kasubila Aktivnost za Medinarovni Jezik Ozovan and no Principit Utapizma, Gidl C. Jedingo Jezika Zavis Mirbis Zilda no Fact. To taki jezik nemo bit the nikakim pripaju resultate real nido resvoju jezik of ivic, to on bud se gatoit of vidomena, speculative ne construtsija. To date, activity for an international language has been based on principles of utopianism, which endeavoured one language for the whole world without regard to the fact that such a language can in no way result from real development of living languages, that it will always be an invented, speculative construction. In the next segment, we'll be exploring Slovio and its implications for our subject matter. One of the first projects in the digital era was Slovio, a project created in 1999 and published in 2001 by the Slovak Mark Hoko. Unlike previous projects, Slovio was not only intended to serve as a pan-Slavic language, but also to compete with languages like Esperanto and Edo as a global international auxiliary language. Most of its vocabulary was based on Slavic roots, but its grammar was almost entirely based on Esperanto with an emphasis on simplicity. Verb conjugations were regular apart from the four verbs sb, mosksken, swant, dolsks must. Adjectives typically ended in ju, the nouns formed their plural in s or is, and the only case was the accusative in f or of plurals or ifs. Slovio could be written in Latin or Cyrillic, but was typically written in Latin, with digraphs in x replacing the hekigis for. 
Slovia was the first Slovak-based constructed language with a substantial dictionary and a small user community, at its peak consisting of users mostly diaspora Slovs and a number of interested bystanders. In spite of heavy marketing on the part of its creator, Slovia gained little support. It was heavily criticized for its artificial, un-Slovic character and the radical Slovic nationalist views expressed by its users. Perhaps due to Hoku's insistence on owning the language and his hostile attitude towards proposed changes similar to the situation with Volupk, people interested in a pan-Slovic language moved on to other projects. It became defunct by about 2011. A passage on the origin of the Europeans' satirical example text and a translation. To S. Besbeju histoju facts see several new Europeanis, nade emenitu indo Europeanis, s potomkis om dunavu savis nade emenitu dunavu lesu ludis. Odniku to S. Besbeju facts seeds yorku jazikus originigit is odniku jazika, jazika om dunavu slavis. It's an undisputed historical fact that the current-day Europeans, sometimes called Indo-Europeans, are all descendants of the Danubian Slavs, sometimes called the Danubian Forest people. Equally, it is an undisputed fact that all European languages originate from the same common language, the language of the Danubian Slavs. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting Slovensky to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. To address the problems of Slovio, a community-based project called Slovensky was begun in 2006. Its main purpose was to create a simple, naturalistic language that would be understandable to Slavs without prior learning. This was approached with a voting system to choose words for the lexicon and a grammar consisting of material existing in all or most Slavic languages, without any artificial additions. Slovensky was developed in different versions. The version of its principal author, Jan van Steenbergen, had three genders masculine, feminine, neuter, six cases and full conjugation of verbs. A high level of simplification was achieved by means of simple, unambiguous endings and irregularity being kept to a minimum. Slovensky was mostly used in internet traffic and in a newsletter, Slovensky Gazeta. In 2012, the language was reported to have several hundreds of speakers. The Lord's Prayer in Slovensky. Naotic, Tori Gizi V Niba, Dosvein Jitvoj Amino, Do Pride Voj Krolutho, Do Budit Voj Volia, Kak V Niba Takai Nozimi. Lubnakodo Deni Danam Tutten, I is Vinij Mam Negri, Tak Kak Miles is Vinim Nesh Grenikov, I Ne Vidijnas V Pokuini, Oli Spesh Nezod Zlogo. Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's now turn our attention to Slovyoski and uncover the fascinating insights it brings to the table. In 2009, Slovyoski a portmanteau of Slovio and Slovensky was launched with the idea of bringing together both language projects. Its initial purpose was merely to provide Slovio with a more Slovic grammar for example, by substituting the adjective ending due with I and the plural ending is with I, but gradually, it developed into a separate language project, widening its distance to Slovio and abandoning the Slovio dictionary in 2010. After Slovensky was reworked into Interslavic, Slovensky was discontinued. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze Neoslavonic from different angles and evaluate its significance. Nova Slovensky Neoslavonic was published in a 128-page book by the Czech pedagogue and programmer Vojtch Runka as a study of what Old Church Slavonic might look like today if it had not stopped developing in the Middle Ages. As a result, Neoslavonic had a complex grammar characterized by various archaisms, for example, for types of past tense, dual, seven cases and the Cyrillic letter, but on the other hand, it contained few exceptions and a relatively small number of repetitive rules. Neoslavonic could be written in four alphabets, Latin, Cyrillic, Greek and Glagolitic. Example. Uve amigos body. To jest project Jezika Nova Slovenskigo. Pro vaz, dobist jigo, itoli i posloli veim pritelgem, 
Yoku li oni ho tibiditi. Dear sirs, here is the Nyslubanit language project. I ask you to read it and send it to your friends if they want to see it. In this section, we'll be deep diving into contemporary Pan-Slavic, unraveling its complexities and uncovering valuable insights. In 2011, Slovensky was renamed Midoslovjansky into Slavic, and its grammar and dictionary were revised to include all options of Nyslovanik and several older projects. A close collaboration was started between them, resulting in a common dictionary, a common news portal and a common wiki, and during the years to follow, Midoslovjansky and Novoslovensky soon renamed Novoslovensky gradually grew closer to each other. As a result, most differences between both projects vanished in a natural way. After the first conference on the Inter-Slavic language in 2017, Mwanka and Van Steenbergen eliminated the last few remaining differences, and in the same year they published a unified grammar and orthography together, soon to be followed by a multilingual online dictionary covering English and most modern Slavic languages. Mitoslovjansky Jezik gained attention from the media and in 2019 came to be featured in the film The Painted Bird. I appreciate your time and I'm grateful for every like, comment, and share.